The hidden beam of light within Raphael's palace of four rooms by Welcome to the Golden Page. Four Rooms is a palace at the Vatican painted by Renaissance artist Raphael. It consists of four rooms, each with four walls filled with images. In the second room, on the floor, we can see a set of keys, surrounded by three green circles and one red circle. In this room, the painting on the right is called Disputa. And the painting to the left is the School of Athens. Directly across from the red circle of keys, we can see a man leaning on a block, a woman looking at us dressed in white, and at her feet, a plaque with a drawing of three windows. These three openings are also known as triptych doors, and this design has been recreated in several ways throughout time. Extend the edges of the plaque and they will connect to the top and bottom edge of the center window at the top of the painting similar to a sunbeam. Now, if we extend the perspective lines of the cube, they come to a single point in the center of the hidden beam directly across from the woman's eyes. Raphael is showing us how the dynamics of light relate to distance in space and a way to fine tune the vibration. If we follow the edge of the light side of the cube to the center of the beam and take a 90 degree turn, it connects to the right edge of the closest archway and it is sitting on the bridge. The bottom edge to the center of the beam with a 90 degree turn connects to the right edge of the farthest archway and it is forming the bridge. And the edge between light and dark extended to the beam Instead of a 90 degree turn, this time the angle is mirrored and connects to the center of space of the center archway. If we extend the dark edge of the cube through the beam, it connects to the statue on the back wall and the strings of his harp. This refers to vibration and where the horizon line appears on a person's body. Extend the edge between light and dark through the beam and it connects to where the statue touches the large arch surrounding the painting. Extend the light edge of the cube through the beam and this is where the statue is standing. On the right side of the painting there is a group of people working with a compass. If we extend the back of the compass, it connects to the same right edge of the closest archway. Extend the front of the compass to where it touches the large arch, and with a 90 degree turn, it connects to the opposite left edge of the closest archway. On the far right, we see two men holding spheres representing Earth and space. Draw a line through their centers and it connects to the ornament at the top of the painting. And this is directly over the right edge of the cube. At the center of the scene, Plato is pointing upwards and his finger is directly over 
the left edge of the cube. He is touching the left edge of the back archway and a line from that point through earth to the edge of the large arch of the painting is equal to the vanishing point for the front of the cube. Across from the School of Athens is a painting called the Sputa. And it is a dispute about the shape of the earth and the horizon. The altar in the center represents our perspective and it is touching the horizon line. If we extend the perspective of the square tiles in the foreground, they diminish to a point higher than the vanishing point of the painting to show the people in this area are discussing what lies beyond the horizon. On top of the altar is an ornament with a similar ratio as earth and moon. This design is also represented in the sky as a ring of clouds and Jesus within the center of a sphere. Again, Plato is pointing to the answer. If we follow his finger upwards, it touches the finger of a man above and to the right side of a sphere representing earth God holds in his hand. And this is referring to Plato's position next to the altar. On the top of God's sphere is a small cross, and this refers to your position on earth. The man sitting to the right of Jesus is holding a large cross. Extend the cross and it connects to the vanishing point of the entire painting. The horizontal bar of the cross, which relates to the horizon line, is slightly bent upwards. Any horizontal line above our eye height will appear this way visually. If we follow the bend of the horizontal bar, it connects to the top and bottom corners of the square behind God's head. And this is a reference to the square tiles in the foreground of the painting. From your perspective, you are always on the top of the planet. Earth is not above you or on the side of you. It is always directly below you, similar to a person walking on the top of a ball. The ball is curved, but their movement is straight, horizontal. In other words, let's for a moment say the Earth was a perfect sphere. When would you be walking down a curve? And when would you be walking up a curve? The answer has to be both simultaneously. When you can see yourself as always on top, you will notice that with each step, your back foot is dropping in curvature the same amount as your front foot and this is what simulates walking on a flat plane. Below our perspective cube is an image of people pointing to that location on a ball and a match to the angle of sunlight. To the left of that scene, we see a man with one foot on the ball. Now let's look back at our red circle next to the keys. If this circle represents a hidden beam of light within this space, then it is coming from the direction of the painting above, from the mirror. On the left side, we can see a tree bent towards the light, and on the right, we see our special S-type curve. This is the shape of the ground in front of us leading to the horizon. It is also the answer to the riddle of the Sphinx and a match to the shape of the ancient Egyptian open mouth tool. Earth curves downwards while at the same time light bends upwards through the atmosphere and in total the ground leading to the horizon forms this shape within our vision.
This statue is pointing to a bird and is referring to the man's position above and the angle of his shadow. The rooms in the center have shorter shadows. The rooms at the ends of the palace have longer shadows and they all radiate from this direction, from the mirror of the sun. On the left, we have East, Sunrise, and Answers. And on the right, we have West, Sunset, and Questions. We see the exact same concept within Da Vinci's Last Supper. The people on the left side of the table are calm, and the right side of the table appear confused. If we take a look at the back wall opposite the mirror of the sun, we see more images relating to dark and light. The hidden beam of light is the key to unlocking the rest of the metaphors and secrets of the palace. And more importantly, it provides us a way to step back and view ourselves from a higher perspective.